And are we ready for, uh, okay. So thanks everybody for being here and for some folks joining us on Twitter Live and Facebook Live. We have all um, had the opportunity to get to hear Rick's story about how he started giving backpacks. And so now we want to ask him for a little bit more of his backstory here at Gonzaga, what eventually um, brought him here, what has impacted him while he's been part of this community, and then of course, what's next. So with that in mind, you've shared with us, we've heard the story about you having been homeless and having been a high school dropout. Tell us a little bit more about what was the spark that made you say, okay, I'm going to go to community college. And then once you and your son finished community college, what was it that pushed you that next step further and specifically made you want to try Gonzaga? So it's kind of the opposite of a spark. It was my worst day. I, I was in Medical Lake. I was living in a trailer. My rent was due. My landlord wanted me out. My Vista had just been shut off, so I had no electricity. Didn't have a car. My third marriage was on the rocks. My wife didn't even live with me. I mean, you can imagine it was the worst situation. And so I, I felt that trying to go back and see if I could get into Spokane Community College was my last option. So it wasn't anything I looked forward to. Um, I had a really bad experience in high school. I had a ninth grade education. So I knew that I wasn't even at that level to, <laughs> of the reading and the math and stuff like that. So it wasn't anything like, oh, I'm excited. I'm gonna go see if I can start school. I literally was like, I'm gonna try this. And if this doesn't work, I think I'm done. Like, I, I remember that day standing up and looking in the mirror and I said out loud to myself, I'm not going out like this. And uh, my board yesterday presented me with a tie clip that says I'm not going out like that, <laughs> or I'm not going out like this. Uh, but it was a really pivotal time because I knew I had to do something. And so I, I had like $8 to my name and I left that trailer and I got on the STA bus and I got into Spokane and all the buses converge at the plaza downtown. And I had about 12 minutes to wait until my next bus came to take me to Spokane Community College. And that was the moment that changed my life. I walked upstairs to the convenience store. I was gonna get, <laughs> I was gonna get some donuts. And uh, I saw this homeless man sitting outside the, the store and two things struck me. One, I'd seen him several times in town other times. And so, and he was really, really dirty. He had no shoes on his feet. It was March. Everyone had shoes on their feet in March. So it, it, it was odd. People were walking far away from him because he looked kind of scary. And he was my son's age Josh the one with the beard in there he was about his age and so that's another thing that struck me it was like this kid is like my son's age this could be my son and uh sorry ah uh, God clearly that day and I love to be able to say really what happened is God clearly that day told me I put this man in front of you so many times when are you gonna say something and so I didn't know what to say I was nervous I, I was already dealing with my own stuff but it was the first time I put all my stuff aside and I just turned to him and I, I didn't know what to say. So I said, Hey, are you, are you hungry? Because I know as a poor person growing up, that's like the universal <laughs> sign. We're always usually hungry, you know? So he said, yeah, I'm starving. And uh, the way he said it, I, I knew it was serious. And so I said, well, let's go. I'm going to spend this whole $8. We're going to get, so he bought Funyuns and Mountain Dew and I got a uh, donut and a coffee and we spent 10 minutes getting to know each other. So you can imagine, I'm just waiting for my next bus to go to a scary school that I don't even want to go to. And I meet this man and I, in 10 minutes, I get to know why he's in Spokane, where his family was, which wasn't in Spokane. He was scared. He had been beat up a few times recently. Uh, the night before he'd been robbed of his backpack, which had his shoes tied to his backpack. So that explained why he didn't have shoes on his feet. So I learned so much in that small moment of time, just asking a complete stranger, what's your deal? You know, and he told me, and I said, I can't leave you. Like, I can't go past and just say, well, good luck. I hope that works out for you. You know, like it was one of those moments I was like, I got to do something. So I said, I had like a hundred followers on Facebook. And I was like, I know a hundred people. I bet I could get somebody to help me fill a backpack. So I said, if you meet me back here in a couple of days, I will bring you a backpack with everything that you lost. And so he was like, so happy and just very grateful. And he was like, really? And so he agreed to meet me and I got on Facebook. I went to SCC and I, I, I applied and I took the assessment testing and I scored really low and they, they assured me that people had scored lower and I was like, okay, then I'm not the worst person in the world. Because yeah, at that time I was not feeling like a real great person. And so they convinced me that I was good to go, which kind of was like a shock. And so I got home and I said, I got on Facebook and I was like, hey everybody, I'm a 44 year old college student. And by the way, I met this man, Jared, on the way to school, which is amazing that all this happened on the same day, but you know how God works. Uh, and I said, can anybody help me fill this backpack? 
uh, I'd like to meet back with him and give it to him. And so then it just, it got shared like 500 times that night. Like it went crazy and I woke up in the morning and we filled a truck with backpacks and toiletries and socks and food and gift cards. And we filled 25 full backpacks. And I was like, I can't give Jared 25 backpacks, you know? So I went out with my kids and we just started handing out backpacks to people on the street just to get rid of those 25 backpacks. And I'm thinking that was what was gonna happen. And awesome, I'm gonna start school. And what it did was it opened up an opportunity and it gave me a purpose at SCC because I didn't know what I was going to go to school for. And that leads into your question, um, communication. So the whole time I'm at SCC, I'm, I'm on honor roll. I'm doing great. I'm just like, my brain is firing off in a different way. I'm soaking up everything. And like I say in the video, you know, you can take everything from me, but you can't take what I learn. And I was literally living in a van in the, in the parking lot at SCC doing my homework with a flashlight at one point. And I never thought I was gonna quit, which is so weird because I quit everything in my life, but something was telling me, no, dude, you're, finish, you're gonna finish this. And uh, I got through you know, SEC and then I was thinking, well, the only thing that really makes sense is maybe social work. But then I was meeting social workers who sit in cubicles all day and they're, they're frustrated because they don't know, even know what they're, what the, if the work they're doing is even making a difference because they're not able to see it. And I was kind of like, well, I don't know, this is what God's kind of leading me to do. And then, uh, my son graduated the same day I did. He was from the Falls and I was from Spokane Community College. So that's another amazing part of my story is I graduate with my son. We're the only one in our family who's ever gone to college and we do that together. And then he says, dad, you, you know, with your grades and with your backpack program, you could go to Gonzaga. And I was like, yeah, why don't I try for Yale or Harvard? Well, I'm, you know, I, I literally laughed at it because I was like, that's ridiculous. You know, I, that's for people, that's for those people that are, way better off than I am and just doing better. And it, it was that whole mentality of just, I'm not good enough. And so um, I started looking through Gonzaga's website and the communications program came up and I was like, that's what I want to do. Um, this whole thing started by one story that I told about a man that I met and it changed people's lives and it was inspiring people and it was encouraging people and it was making me um, aware of things that I had the power to, to, to go out and make a positive change and stuff like that. So I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to get into communications because that could, that could lead to a lot of different things, you know, and, and, and giving backpacks is growing. So I was starting to meet with influential people in Spokane. And so I'm like, well, communications there would help me speak better and, and, and get my point across and, and try to understand other people's points of view, God forbid, you know? And so um, that's, what, that's what I did. And so I sat down and I applied for Gonzaga and I had to borrow $50. I think it was $50 to, to apply and um, a couple knew that I was struggling and they said, here's $50 to apply. And I was like, okay, thank you. And I applied and, and uh, tell us about that acceptance letter that you got. So I got this beautiful package in the mail. Um, just the letter basically said, and it wasn't word for word, but it basically said, Rick, we've been waiting for you. You know, I, I wrote them and said, uh, that hungry, homeless, broken boy who's been in Spokane, that, his whole life is at your door. I hope you open it. Because I was, I was throwing everything I had at Gonzaga. I was like, I'm, I'm going all in because I have nothing to lose. And then they wrote, and then they wrote back, uh, yeah, we know, and we're here. We love you. Uh, we've been waiting for you. And then I cried all day, and my wife cried. And, uh, and then they said, here's, $34,000 to get started. And uh, that was, you know, <laughs> that was the, be the beginning of more amazingness that uh, it's hard to put into words. I just, I don't even know how to really explain it. <laughs> so you were sharing earlier that some of that $34,000 came from a special family scholarship that you received. So not that, that on top of it, while I've been here, I've applied for other scholarships and I got the Mary Stuart Rogers scholarship for $5,000. and. I didn't understand what scholarships were until my very last uh, quarter, because they do quarters at SEC, at SEC, and I, I applied for a scholarship, and I remember the man that was in charge of scholarships at SEC was like, Rick, I wish you would have come here when you first started. He, he's like, I have thousands of dollars I'm trying to give students, and nobody applies for them, and I'm like, I had no idea, <laughs> you know, and so I got a, like a $1,000 scholarship right at the very end of my time at SEC, but what that did is it taught me like, oh, maybe at Gonzaga, I can apply for scholarships, and maybe it won't be this horrific amount that everybody keeps telling, because people were like, oh, you're going to Gonzaga, say goodbye to your you know, finances forever and blah, 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 and you know, it's gonna cost you a million dollars. And 
and uh, but I started getting scholarships and I started applying for them and just taking that time you know out of school and doing school work and stuff like that but taking that time to really focus on what scholarships I could fit into and then the yeah the Mary Stuart Rogers one they they presented me with it and gave me this beautiful gold ring that I got with it and treated me to dinner and I got to meet the whole family and it just really showed me that there's people out there that have either you know come through Gonzaga and now they're they're doing better and so they they come back and they offer these scholarships and that's something I want to do I honestly before I leave this earth, I want there to be a Rick Clark scholarship that I am able to help the next person that thought that they weren't worthy. Gee whiz, guys. Thanks for making it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an emotional week. Yes, it has. So then what does that say to you about other people that you meet who um, may be wondering whether it's too late for them? What's your message? I get messages in, uh, and emails all the time from people saying, you've encouraged me to go back to school. And um, I, I have a few people that have literally sent me pictures of their, their school books and the, the, they're in school because of my story. And so that was another part that I, I was not expecting. I mean, I had so much other stuff going on and I was so happy with my life. But then to hear that my story encouraged other people to, to in their 30s and 40s and 50s to go back to school is just something that like, it's just icing on the cake. Like, wow, this is... I, I believe God gave me work to do, and uh, I feel honored to be out there doing the work. And um, you know, as much as I want to say it's me, it's not. I mean, it, it really is um, my faith, and just that I think that my 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 path was planned a long before I was even born. It's just I had to go through, through some things to figure it out, and uh, I'm glad that I figured it out before I left. You know, and uh, all I can do is um, wake up every day, and I I, I just try to do the best I can and help as many people as I can and, and uh, encourage and inspire people. And then I lay my head down and it's the best sleep I ever get because um, I had a lot of time in my life where I wasn't a bad person. I just didn't do anything. I just floated through this life for 40 years. I just floated around doing odd jobs and just not really tapping into my potential and knowing that I had a bigger purpose. And I want to, I love going out on the street and telling people, I was right where you were. Four years ago, I was sleeping outside just like you are, and I just walked across the stage at Gonzaga University. And uh, they look at me like, like a, a moment of clarity, like, wait a minute, so this might not be who I am as a person? Like, I can actually get out of this? And I'm like, yeah, you can do it because I did it, so let me help you, you know? And that's a lot different than just saying, hey, go watch this TED Talk or read this book, you know? Like, I, I actually went through it, so I feel that... Um, that what the way that I'm presenting it is is something that people can latch onto and say, okay, well, maybe I can do it, you know. So that's a whole separate audience of people that you've been able to reach with your personal <coughs> message. What do you think about the impact among the students who were sitting there in that classroom, uh, the students who were asked the question about what it's what it's like to have someone of your generation in their classes with them day in and day out, and what do you think that exchange was, both for for them and for you to be among the younger generation for the last two years. They need to, to go through the process. So when I started, I think I started the year that it was the smartest <laughs> freshman class to ever start. Like they had like a 3.8 or something like, like ridiculous. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not th at that level, but I've got uh, some life experience I could share, you know? And so it was really funny because I'm in a sea of 6,000 20 year olds. And I literally knew one guy in his thirties <laughs> on the entire campus. Whenever we saw each other, we just high five. Like <laughs> And he graduated with me, so it was just really cool because we did it, you know, and um, everyone was my children's age. I literally have children their age, and so I was protective. I, was, I, I wanted to tell them what the world was really going to be like because they had some ideas of what they thought the world was going to be, and I was like, oh, you might want to <laughs> rethink that because here's what happened to me, and um, I made some great friends. I loved meeting parents because I was able to shake their hand and say, you did a wonderful job with your student. I've, I just spent two years with your kid who treated me like everybody else, jumped on the chance to work with me in little side projects. Some people were like, ooh, stay away from the old guy, you know, because it's just, it's weird, you know, and so, but there were some kids that just uh, opened up and just made me be, feel part of Gonzaga's community and we're literally friends now and I have 20 year old friends and so, uh, when this video, I've talked to everybody in that class. I've already messaged yesterday, today, and they've messaged me like, did you see the video? And we check in on each other. How's your summer going? And um, it's just amazing to see 
these brilliant kids who have been born and bred to go to Gonzaga, like literally their entire lives, they've been in school to come here and, they, and they're just, they're anxious and they want to know what's out there and to be able to sit in classrooms and talk with students and, and get that conversation going of what, what the world is like. Um, and it's just been neat to be able to bounce that off of each other. So I kind of clung to them for their, the, 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 like how to build a paper and how to make it make sense. And, and then they clung to me with, uh, we, we took projects out to the street and we met homeless people. And I, I brought kids out there that had never spoken to a homeless person and it changed their life. They literally are like, wow, I never thought it was that easy. I was scared. I thought people would attack me or, and I've had 4,000 interactions with homeless people and not one person's ever spit at me. Not one person's ever swung at me. Nobody's even so much as cursed at me. And so my big thing is, um, especially right now during the, this whole political process, uh, there's just a lot of fear out there that there's, there's a scary, you know, the library is scary and this isn't that is scary. And it's like, okay, there's, there's things that happen, but honestly, I've been out there and it's not what you think it is. It's okay to roll your window down and say, how's your day going at a light rather than roll your window up and pretend like you're playing with your radio, which is what I did for years, you know? It, it's weird at first, but then you get used to it. And then you start to realize, oh, that person, you could tell that that generally meant something to that person and you didn't give them a dollar. It's not giving money. It's just letting them know, hey, I know you're alive. You're part of this community. I'm not gonna let you die out on the streets thinking that nobody cared about you. Even if it's for a five second moment at the light, you know. <clears throat> I could go on forever. Well, you offered an education for them that they wouldn't have otherwise had, and you're still doing that now, and I think you've inspired a ton of people, and with this kind of show, that's just going to continue. So what's yeah. next? So we have uh, a phase two of giving backpacks, so you can imagine for four years we've been giving backpacks away, so now when I go to give a backpack away, somebody already has two backpacks, and I'm trying to give them a third backpack, so my goal isn't to just cover this town with backpacks. Um, we want to connect them. So the thing is, and I'm taking this from my experience on the streets, I always felt disconnected. So we're, we're working with the mu music community and the art community and trying to get people who are experiencing homelessness to get involved in art and music and, and stuff that they can create something that lasts longer than maybe they are here and stuff like that. And so that stuff's really important to me. And, and then phase three will be working with uh, businesses to help employ people who are ready to go to work, but they just, they don't even have clean clothes, you guys. They can't go to an interview when you stink and you have PTSD and you can't even be around people, but you're supposed to, because the number one thing people shout out, and we learned this through our research here at Gonzaga, was get a job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the one thing. So people think that it's so easy to just, I'm gonna yell out at this person to get a job, and that's my part that I've taken to make this world a better place, and what they don't understand is that's actually not helping. <laughs> uh, and a lot of people can't just walk in and say, hey, I'd like to work in an office. For f I have one pair of pants, I have no socks, my teeth are gone, you know. So um, there's just a lot of stuff that, that, uh, that you have to think about. And so getting out there and, and making that known, I love when people re reach out to me and say, I always have had a problem with homeless people, but you've shown me over the last couple of years that it's not what I thought it was. and I'm actually starting to do something. I'm like, boom, that's all I wanted. <laughs> it's just to, to let people know it's not a, it's not a cookie cutter situation. It's not, it's not them, like they're all the same. Everybody has a, a different story. I've met the most amazing people. I've met nurses and teachers that are homeless and uh, published uh, poets that were homeless. Um, yeah, it's not just the stereotypical homeless person that you hear about. <clears throat> Do we have any questions coming in from our Facebook or Twitter live audiences or here in the room? Yeah. Um, as you're moving into the next phase where you were talking about um, developing kits for like art and things like that, what sort of resources would you be looking to cultivate for that? Because I think that's an amazing So that's it. We're really at the very spiritually at the very start of that. So we're literally our board just started discussing it. So we're just trying to get in touch with the right people. So um, with this micro thing, we're getting a lot of people that want this to be taken to their city. So we're developing a seminar where people can come to Spokane, learn how to do it, and then go back to their city and do it, rather than me flying and going to all these different cities. Um, and so that's another part too that we're balancing is spreading the phase one, which is just the giving backpacks and connecting people and showing people that they're part of a community. And then this phase two, we're just really excited. So we're taking all considerations and just listening to everybody at this point because we want to do it right, you know. Yeah. I don't want to jump in, jump into something and be like, oh, I didn't think about that, so. Mm -hmm. 
Good question. <laughs> Stay tuned, and if you can help, beautiful. let me know. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Nothing from the community. I was going to say, surely one of our communications <laughs> faculty members would love to ask Hello. a question. I, I just, hi, Rick. Good to see you. You too. Uh, happy summer. Um, Thank you. I'm just curious what's happened since since that event and until now. Like, sort of, how have you managed that influx of backpack and everything? Talk to us about okay, so, the last two months. So he gave me 500 of these backpacks that are made of ballistic material, so they're basically bulletproof. They're waterproof. They have a built-in poncho, really heavy-duty poncho, so when it rains, it's built in. Um, they lock to your body so nobody can steal them at night, and that's how this whole thing started was Jared, a lot of people get their backpacks stolen. And so he gave me these 500 backpacks, but I couldn't really go out and show anybody yet because had I gone out in force, they'd be like, wait a minute, these are like the Cadillac backpack. Where'd you get all these backpacks? And so I've been kind of onesie twosie giving them away when I need to. Uh, he gave me $42,000 in deodorant. So we're going to be like the freshest smelling <laughs> city ever. Uh, so if you can imagine, I have an entire storage unit just full of boxes of deodorant. Uh, biodegradable toothbrushes that if they throw them, they're biodegradable. Uh, they really put some thought and, and stuff. And then they gave me the contacts. And the, these people are starting to contact me now that the show has aired. City Pack, uh, in fact, I have an, uh, a message waiting for me to respond to them saying we want to give you backpacks from this point on so that 500 doesn't just stop at 500 now we have a relationship with city pack so uh you're so to answer your question it, it hasn't even been 24 hours so i'm still getting like a million things happening at one time and i, I i'm trying to figure out who's for real because i'm also getting like scams and like yeah. people that want to be my friend that i don't even you know it's weird so uh, i'm just trying to decipher all that and just make sure to to do the right thing, but uh, we, we plan on, what I would love to do is say, hey, you know, so-and-so comes in from Ohio and they wanna learn how to give backpacks. I'm gonna send you back with a bunch of these ballistic backpacks and all the stuff to get started because, and I, I can still give backpacks in Spokane, but like I said, we've done that. We're, we're trying to really get people the resources now. And so um, those backpacks will be used uh, with the efforts to go around the country, if that answers that. Yeah, that's all right, we'll question. take one more. Yeah. What would you love to have happen on day one of our new mayor's um, term? Ooh, day one. Um, jeez. with you, chat with you, talk about everything. Oh, things. yeah, I mean, absolutely. Because uh, homelessness is one of the top issues, I would love to be somebody that they reached out to. I mean, there's, there's so many other people that are dealing with homelessness that aren't at the forefront. So I mean, there, I've met people who have been doing this for years that get no recognition and stuff. And I, I feel bad because it's like, because of my story, it gained a lot of attention. But there's people out there that have been working this day in, day out, um, and are part of this. Um, I'm just trying to bring something fresh and new. And so a lot of stuff that's been happening in Spokane has been beat up year after year after year. And it doesn't seem to be working. The numbers of homelessness is going up. The money we're spending is going up. Um, so I would love to be just a part of the conversation of how to be creative about homelessness. And you, it, it doesn't have to be um, anything crazy. It can just be, you know, connecting with people and, and, and letting people know that it's okay if you have a past. You know, you can't, some, some groups only want to help you if you are a certain type of person or if you believe in a certain thing. And some, some groups don't, if you don't know your sexuality, they don't want to help you. And that's, that's, that stuff doesn't, that doesn't, I don't even understand that stuff because I love everybody. And so I want to be able to have a, have a city where if you're homeless and um, you're, you know, transsexual, you have a place that you're safe and you're, you're able to, to get help. And um, right now there's just so much divisiveness that I, I just want to be part of that conversation and, and maybe uh, think of creative ways to, to deal with it rather than the same old, same old. Well, we're so glad that we got to be part of your story. Gonzaga is really fortunate, first of all, just to have you as part of our community because we love what you're doing and what you're about and what you stand for and, and the way that you're caring for people in our community. And uh, so we want you to stay connected to us, however that is. I'm sure that um, faculty members will invite you back into classrooms and we would love to continue connecting us uh, with alumni, you know, like we did on Zag's Gift Day. There's so many opportunities, so we definitely want you to stay connected Absolutely. to Gonzaga. Yeah. A huge thank you oh. to you.